Promo Insider is an ASI media podcast that covers the issues that matter most to the promotional products industry. I'm Chris Ruvo for ASI, and today we're here to talk about one of the more headline-grabbing rebrands the promo industry has seen of late. It involves Halo Branded Solutions, one of Promo's biggest distributors. Halo announced the comprehensive rebrand in early May 2021. Here today to tell us about that is Jeffrey Wurzel and Jim Stutz. Jeff is Senior Vice President of Marketing at Halo. Jim is Executive Vice President of Sales, Marketing, and Business Development. Guys, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Hey, absolutely. So let's jump into the questions. How would you define Halo's new brand identity? Uh, that's a good question. Um, and I think we also have to look at it, how it relates to the old brand identity, right? Okay. And, how, and, the, and the evolution of that brand. Mm -hmm. Halo is, grew up in the, in the promotional products industry. And, um, and our brand has always represented creative products, creative solutions in, in managing the transaction. As Halo has evolved and followed Mark's vision over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. we've moved in many directions. And, um, but we've always followed Mark's mantra of, of listen to the customer. And at Halo, our customer is our sales teams. Mm -hmm. And our sales teams are always telling us uh, what their specific clients value and what they need uh, to continue to promote and enhance their brand. So we have grown into um, a leader in the promotional product space, but also our sales teams have pushed us into uh, corporate apparel and uniform program solutions. Mm -hmm. They've pushed us into recognition and incentive solutions. And so, in so in doing and providing those solutions for our sales teams, we've evolved into a leader in the business to business service industry. And we believe that our brand identity needs to reflect that. And to kind of put that in perspective, if you think of it this way, we, we provide promotional merchandise to probably the largest entertainment company out there today. Okay. They select, Halo because of our product safety initiatives, because of the sustainability efforts that we have uh, offered and provide them, our ability to protect their brand in that area. And our brand identity needs to reflect those services we provide to them. We also provide corporate apparel and uniforms to the largest distribution and technology company uh, out there today. They select Halo because we can ensure that that uniform will be at the right employee mm -hmm. at the right time when they go to work. And our brand identity needs to reflect that. We provide recognition services to a, to a company that is out there at the leading edge fighting uh, COVID today. Mm -hmm. So while they're out there sending vaccines all across the globe, we are providing their employees uh, recognition solutions in over a hundred different countries today. Mm -hmm. So our brand identity needs to reflect the, the logistics and distribution and the capabilities that we provide that company um, to, to, uh, to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So it really needs to be a flexible brand identity that reflects all the services we provide and, um, and that's what we're looking to do with this, with this new brand launch. All right. Very, very well said. Now, if we were at, um, we were at a Cubs game, say, let's say the Cubs, since, since Halo's uh, <laughs> head, headquartered in Illinois, we're at a Cubs game, we're having a beer. And I said, what's your, what's your company's brand? And you had to tell me in like a couple, couple sentences, how would you define that, that character? Is there a mission statement or, or something that you guys have that, that sums it up? I know there's so much to, to, to kind of encapsulate there, but is there something along those lines? Yeah, I we, we help companies break through. Okay. We help them stand out, and we do that through the services that that we provide: mm -hmm. in branded merchandise, uniform solutions, and recognition and incentive programs. And so, what we're really trying to do is help build our clients' brands from the inside out using those range of services to help them solve their most critical business challenges and reach their most critical audiences. 
Okay. All right. Well said. Now, now we have that that essential character, right? We have that that essence, if you will, of the, of the brand. But a huge part of that is is how, how how you go to market visually. You guys are sales and marketing guys. You know the importance of that. So can you tell us a little bit about the the, the graphical elements that are kind of you know bringing this new brand to life? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the first thing as a marketer, design really follows the strategy and the messaging. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's first and foremost. And what we were really looking to do with our design is two things. The first is we needed to bring together our company under one umbrella of Halo. Okay, we needed to have represent our solutions, our different sales teams, uh, the services we provide. The second thing, and I think this was critically important for our company, is we really needed to dial up the fun and energy of how okay. we were presenting ourselves in the marketplace. And I think what you see with a, with a lot of B2B companies is they kind of project this real corporate style. Mm -hmm. But what we learned, and Jim really talked about it, is there is such a sense of pride, engagement, excitement when companies are using swag or they're putting on a uniform or they're getting recognized. And we wanted to inject that same enthusiasm and energy. And so what we did through a lot of research and a lot of work to, to understand our position in the marketplace, our competitors, is we designed all of our, we, we, we redesigned all of our touch points. So everything from our logo to our visual design language, to uh, the swag that we send to our clients and prospects, to our website, our social, our digital, to the forms and acknowledgements that we send to clients, everything to the packing tape that we put around a box that goes out to millions of end users. And um, you know, we've had a team that's looked at all of that and has looked at refreshing everything to really inject this energy and enthusiasm around the gift that we give to clients, which is helping them to break through. All right, very, very interesting stuff. Now, now some of my next question, I think, some of it is almost implied in what, in what you guys have kind of said so far, but let's maybe de delve a little deeper into it. And this is this is really, I think, a, a key point. What advantages do you believe that this new brand identity is going to give Halo as you guys go to market with it? Uh, we look at brand identity kind of in the context of uh, what value do we bring to the marketplace and how does this help our sales teams provide value to their customers? So through this process, we've really just developed better and more tools for our sales teams to use to educate their clients on all that we do. And, and we can better leverage these great solutions uh, that our sales, our marketing teams, our internal support teams, um, that they develop each and every day for specific clients. We can now leverage those across the enterprise. If, if you kind of think about it this way, um, collective intelligence is a term we like to utilize. If one of our sales teams, one of our marketing teams develops a solution for a particular client in Southern California, we can share that solution with a sales team in Boston, a sales team in Orlando, and now it's all Halo. So it's a Halo solution that can be leveraged across um, the enterprise and across every rep. And so we've we've gotten better at our ability to share and educate and, and ensure those solutions meet the specific needs of our clients and then can be leveraged. It's actually a neat concept now that one halo can offer it to all of our customers. All right. Very, very, very interesting. I, that 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 brand unification seems to be a, a very common theme. And I, I, I could see especially. I mean, it's no secret in the industry how much Halo has, has has grown organically, but also through acquisitions in recent years. So, you know, you have, I don't want to say disparate companies, but companies that had different backgrounds, their own cultures. You have to bring that all under one umbrella and make it work. And this rebrand is, seems to be, you know, re doing that, right? Is that is that the idea? At least in part? A a absolutely. And to, to understand that, you kind of got to get a sense of what our acquisition strategy ha has been. And, and our approach has always been acquire the, the best in class businesses in the industry. Leverage the equity and the benefits of these incredible teams and these incredible uh, businesses across the, in, the entire enterprise. Really, in, in many ways, 
Halo is a compilation of the best of the best across all of our acquired companies. We, we have these leaders, right, from these acquired companies, Mitch Munger, Tommy Kahneman, Larry Cohen, Shamini Peters, Bill Barrett, um, Jeff and Mike Fina, Tom Havens, Cord Himmelstein. I mean, these leaders at these great businesses have taken on larger roles within Halo. And we're able to build a leadership team with them that is like no other our industry has, has, has ever seen. So it, it, it's been a, a great realization that, you know, Halo, we've done a nice job. We've grown well. But Mark's vision and strategy of acquisition is acquire these great, fast moving, fast growing companies. Uh, learn from them, listen to them, take what they do extremely well, develop best practices, and then bring them together with the resources that Halo can bring to bear and help them grow. You know, world class technology, warehouse and distribution capabilities creative and marketing solutions. Bring those together, identify what works, and then get out of their way. You know, let Larry, Mitch, and their teams do what they do best, which is provide great solutions and grow with their customers. And that's really been our strategy. Now everyone's decided we all want to have the same name on the front of our jersey as we go into the game. And that's really what's neat to see, and that's what we're trying to accomplish. All right, very, very, very interesting. Now, um, the the next aspect of this, you guys, I guess you've kind of answered. I guess you half anticipated my question, which is why did Halo <laughs> decide to rebrand? Yeah. You know, and what was involved in that process? So, if there's anything else you want to add on why on the why, and then get into how you went about doing this, I think that would be really interesting to hear about. Chris, it's something I, that you talked about, and we felt um, through our growth. I mean, you look at Halo, and Jim touched on this like six years ago we were doing less than 200 million. Last year, we did $765 million in sales. Mm -hmm. When you go through that type of growth, you've really got to know who you are. I mean, we have pulled together so many different solutions and services and the complexity of the market has, has been dialed up. And so the executive team back in 2019, what we decided as an executive team, it was, it was time to really take a look at what, what did Halo stand for? Like, what was our position in the marketplace and really define where we wanted to head. And so we made a, we made the decision to kind of go through this exercise of looking at our brand, looking at our company. And um, we ended up, you know, realizing this through um, a lot of discussions that we had with clients. And one of the big challenges that we had and what kept rising up is we had all these different services. We had different names on the front of the jersey. We were trying to sell the same thing. Um, but it was a little complex in terms of how do we sell recognition through one of our businesses? How do we sell uniforms through CSC? And then how do we bring warehousing and fulfillment through Halo? We needed to have a, a we needed to close that gap and tell a more comprehensive story. And so what we ended up doing um, is making an investment and retaining a really fantastic agency partner um, called DeSantis Brundell, and they're based out of New York. They do really top of the line B2B service brand strategy um, across all the touch points that a company needs to communicate. And um, the critical thing in working with them is uh, we spent a lot of time in research, a lot of time. And they are real experts in taking an unvarnished look at what are you good at? Where do you need to improve? How do you need to communicate? What's your culture? How can you best share that out? And so, you know, I would say this, you know, when we did this, we had almost a full six months where we just spent time talking to hundreds of account executives, hundreds of prospects, um, hundreds of clients that we already had and trying to really understand what was the special DNA of Halo. I mean, we kind of knew that, but we needed to articulate that in a real clear, concise way to the market, which we think we've done a really nice job of uh of doing was there any surprises that came up um you know sometimes we feel like we have a, a good assessment of ourselves and we know where we're at and and then somebody comes in and kind of offers a perspective You're like you know i didn't know that about myself was, was there some, was there any like aha moments or was it pretty much in line with what you already knew and then and then you had you had to go about building on it what a great question and um i'll take it first and, and maybe jim can add to this too and um 
I think one thing that really was pleasantly surprising, and we actually looked at every company in the industry and talked to clients and um, potential buyers, and we asked them where where did Halo stand? And one of the things that was really reassuring is we were really starting from a place of strength. And I think this is a, you know, it, our, our sales teams and employees should be really proud of this is that we have a really well-regarded company in the industry and among buyers. And so we knew from the start through our research, we were really starting from a place of strength. We didn't have to make this up. Um, I think the other, some of the other key insights that we had is, and Jim touched on this, buyers don't, you know, companies don't think of their brand in different ways where they're all, it's all fragmented brand approach. What they're really trying to do is build a brand from everything, every touch point from their employees all the way to the people on the front line that are wearing uh, the uniform, all the way to recognizing uh, their workforce through incentives. And they have to connect that brand all in one way. And what we realized through our research is that companies are buying all this stuff. It isn't like there's just promo buyers out there. They may exist within a company, but the companies themselves are really buying all of these services. And it told us uh, through all of our questions that there was this real big marketplace opportunity that we could capture. And we were already doing a successful job doing it. And so that was really you know, a few of the insights that, that helped us along with the decisions that we've made around our brand redesign. Excellent. Jim, how about you? Anything, anything spring to mind on that? No, I, Jeff pointed it out. Um, what was very um, energizing and great to see was the, the internal team jump on board. You know, Jeff led this effort, but he, he, he did it the right way. We went to hundreds and hundreds of account executives, their clients, their prospects, and, and got an accurate reflection of what we were, what our brand represented in the marketplace, and then what we needed to do to further enhance it and stretch it. And uh, it really was just a great exercise to go through and learn a little bit about ourselves and, and then also learn about what we can accomplish. And, um, and we're looking to accomplish what we can, so. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, know too, I know too now, um, you know, this, this rebrand, it wasn't just conceptual, it wasn't just visual. There's some nuts and bolts type stuff going on here too. I think there was upgrades, if I'm not mistaken, to the website. I think there was new offerings on, on the intranet that, that, that you run for your employees and for your, for your sales partners. Can you guys maybe speak to that a little bit, how, how, what, what those things are and how they're kind of involved in the rebrand? Yeah, um, two years ago, and, and Jim talked about some of the uh, trying to develop the best of the best in terms of talent. And one of the benefits that we have is we have really smart, great people working across the business in, all, in creative, in design, in digital. And so two years ago, we developed a new digital team to help with external facing communication. The site that you see today on halo.com has really served us up to this point, but it's really focused on product centric, you know, features, telling uh, the story, you know, telling a real, um, uh, maybe like a legacy story. What we're really looking to do, and we will launch this in the next 60 days, is a, a full comprehensive redesign of our externally facing website to share case studies, stories, more insights that we can provide to customers. So that is all being upgraded with the new design um, and then internally, which is great, is we've developed new uh, learning and resource platform, right? Almost every week, our account executives are getting updates that they can send to their clients. I mean, we are just, we've got a full team that is, uh, is managing that, posting stuff, developing content that can be sent out. And so we're looking to really streamline that. And we think it's a real advantage for, for the company. Okay. Fantastic. Now, uh, one of the things that that's come across in our discussion, you said it earlier, I think you used the word fun, that 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 mm -hmm. you wanted to have the just have more of an element of fun in the brand. And even with um, mentioning things like like case studies that you're putting on the website, I think that brings more of an approach approachability. And I think that ties in with fun. Like, hey, we're fun. We make and do fun things for our clients that help them be more successful. Come check it out. It just I, that seems to be very much in line with where you want to go with this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we do want it to be enjoyable, but there's also a very, very strong business purpose to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And today, brands and the, and the power of a brand has never been more important to an organization. And so we are out there looking for ways to allow our sales teams to enhance their customers' brand. And, and they're doing it in a variety of ways. And, and oftentimes people may look at us and wonder, hey, you're in the promotional products business. You're in the corporate apparel and uniform business. You're in the recognition and incentive business. How does that tie and how does that provide value to your sales team? Well, if, if you look at it uh, historically, our sales teams have been providing promotional merchandise to their clients and helping them enhance and protect their brand. It's evolving though, and, and the brands are evolving. Our clients are coming to us and saying, you know, we are having issues with employees uh, retention. We are trying to attract the best and the brightest out there in the marketplace. Can you help us do that? Our brand needs to also work inward. The grandfather clock, the gold watch, the 25 year employee, and, you know, that's not a recognition um, program today as it was 15, 20 years ago. So companies need to get uh, attract and retain employees. They need to get them from one year to two year to three year. That's really what they're doing. And so our recognition and incentive platforms and programs are leveraging brand promotion and promotional merchandise because you can now give a gifts to somebody one year to two years and it should have the mark on it. It should reflect what the brand is and that will enhance uh, the employee experience within that company and then allow them to stay on or to have them choose to stay on. So that's a natural fit and more and more of our promotional products clients now are reaching out to us to help them in the recognition space. The same way it works in the corporate apparel and uniform uh, um, service offering that we provide. There is no better brand experience for a company than the interaction with their employee and their customer. And so if that employee looks sharp, has a great uniform that's reflective of the brand, it's clean, it's crisp, uh, we can provide that. And we view that as promotional merchandise because the employee is promoting their brand out there. So all three of our service offerings today need to be an extension of our brand and provide that service to our customers. And hopefully it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Now we um, we hit on this next one earlier, but I kind of just want to nail it down to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm understanding it correctly. You know, we, we've seen as, as Halo has acquired uh, companies, especially some of the, you know, some of the other big top 40s that you guys have bought in recent years and, and very well-known brands, um, the the name, if you will, or the nomenclature was, you know, Sunrise Identity powered by Halo, you know, or, or CSE powered by whatever it might be. Now, is that all going away? Is, is it just going to be universally Halo now or, or, or does some of that distinctiveness still still remain? Yeah, we're, we're, we're all, we're all Halo. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Sunrise brand had some great equity. Axis mm -hmm. brand, great equity. Mm -hmm. We're taking the equity of those great brands and evolving them into Halo. So yes, we are going to market as Halo. Uh, these acquisition companies, uh, the the sales reps that join us uh, want to go to market under Halo. And as I said earlier, as Jeff reaffirmed, you know, we're a team. We want one name on the front of our jersey. Mm -hmm. We want to take the collective intelligence of everybody we acquire and everybody we have on the team and make all that intelligence and those offerings available to everybody. You know, a halo story in Seattle is the same as the halo story in New York, as the same halo story in Sterling, Illinois. And we're able to take all of that equity and make it available to our clients, our prospective clients, and, and, and do it as one, uh, one brand and one organization. I'll add to what Jim's saying. We have 1,800 employees and sales teams. We've got 1800, 42, okay, well, yeah. 42 offices around the world. The, the critical thing, and we say this within our brand messaging, is that one of the benefits that you're getting is exactly what Jim's talking about, but will never diminish the local presence that we have across the country. Okay. Okay. That is so critical to our success is that we have local offices in almost every major market that can service clients. That is a distinct advantage for the company. 
So we believe that we can market really at scale, mm -hmm. but do so in a very localized way where we're providing the attention, the execution, uh, all of the service that's needed for our clients. And so we, th like the combination of those two is what in some ways what we think is going to continue to unlock the success that we've had historically. That's that's, a, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Sorry, Jim. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you no, off. I was going to say, abs absolutely. Much of our research showed and indicated one of the strongest brand extensions we could offer is that local presence, our salesperson meeting with the customer, listening to the customer and, and helping them achieve their goals and objectives. And, and, and that's paramount to our success. All right. Now, before you guys rolled this out to the world, there was a, there was a rollout to um, employees and, and uh, your sales professionals. Um, I think I was, I, you mentioned 1800. There was probably just about that many mm -hmm. on, on your on the webinar that, that you did yeah. announcing this. Um, so what has been their reaction to it? Have, have you gotten feedback on it? And what, and what are you hearing from them? Reaction? They all drive it. They, they <laughs> uh, 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 so uh, all we really did was uh, was uh, aggregate and put together what they told us. Um, so the reaction is very strong. Um, and at the end, a brand is really a reflection of the culture, uh, of of the business offerings and the people that are part of the organization, and um, and we believe that the brand um, evolution and where we are today is an accurate rep representation of that. So um, and we'll continue to build uh, because of that. And so um, the team is very supportive and, and and is very excited about the brand. Really, this brand evolution launch is an opportunity for us to to re-educate everyone on the tools that are available, re-educate everybody on, on what Halo can do for them so that they can offer these additional services to their customers. And, and it's been just um, met with just resounding acceptance, success, and how do I get more? So we're very <laughs> okay. pleased. Jim, Jim that's, a, that's a great point that you made that they, that they're, how could they react to it? Because they formulated this was not a top down thing. It's you guys aggregated all that yeah. brought it together and it's an organic outgrowth of what the brand kind of already was naturally. And then it's now just been amplified through through the direction you're giving it now. Absolutely. And yeah. yeah. And I'll add too, like and this is so clear as a marketer, you cannot develop a brand with a poor product. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that, mm -hmm. That's the thing that really. Um, that's the thing that gives us the confidence here to be able to go do this is that we have a lot of confidence that we've got this world-class organization. We have incredible talent. We have this great culture. Um, the sales teams that we have out there are doing absolutely incredible things with clients, hundreds of clients every day, thousands of clients. And so, you know, it gives us the confidence to be able to actually go say these things communicate them and Jim is 100% right. It's really just a reflection. And we tried telling the story in this really clear way that represents our entire and our entire company. All right. Very good guys. I only got one more for you and it's kind of asking you to put your advice caps on here. So for other country or countries, companies, excuse me, looking to rebrand, um, what advice would you, would you give them? Is there, is there a place that they should start and then how should they go about it? Uh, be open-minded. I think that's the first one because you're going to learn a lot. Um, I, I think it go, you go. It's this idea that um, you got to start with a great product or service. Number one, don't don't do this just to make it up and fake it. Okay. It's got to start with a great product and service. We believe we have have that. Um, I, I think there's four other things too. One is our, our executive team has been awesome. And what they did from the start is they really, they made the decision to look at this. We were aligned. We were identifying the challenge that we were trying to solve together. And we had this vision that we wanted to be one halo in building this really great company. Um, and so we were one team. I think that was really important to do that right up front. Uh, the second thing is we brought in an awesome partner who was okay. gonna tell us the truth. Um, you know, we didn't just ask them to create a logo for us. That was yeah. the easy part. We asked them to tell us the truth and they really did it. 
And um, it sounds, Jeff, like like you didn't say, "Hey, this is what we want to be. Make it happen." You said, "You said you you said what are we? What are you seeing is as that we are, and how do we kind of seize on the best of that?" Is that fair to say? One hundred percent. And it starts really with Mark Simon, our CEO. He is always looking to see how can we get better, how can we have an honest assessment of ourselves, how we can we continue to grow and bring in new ideas. And I think. I mean, it starts at the top in terms of that mentality and that cultural uh, impact that we want to have in the organization. And, um, and we spent the time to really do the research, like to really fundamentally understand what made our company unique. What were we not good at? Like, where should we stay away? What was true and resonated with the teams, the employees, the culture, the people, the sales teams that we have? And then finally, you know, I can't say this enough, like we really built a marketing organization in our company that embodies a lot of what Jim was talking about, building the best and the best. Um, you know, I've, we have people on my team that have led this. Stephanie Preston has done an unbelievable job. Cord Himmelstein, who runs our digital. Tom Havens runs our creative services. They have done a fantastic job across digital creative marketing to hit all these touch points. And so, um, you know, Jim and I are excited about this. We think we're just getting started uh, and we're going to have a lot of impact with our, you know, our clients, our sales teams, and um, we're ready to lock in for the future here. Well said, Jim, um, anything to add on that or any takeaways either of you would like to add? Uh, I think Jeff outlined it perfectly. I think uh, one thing I would add is you got to commit to the process. Okay. It's there's many ups and downs, and um, and if you start with what you're good at and expand from there, um, it, uh, it 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 can work. But um, as Jeff pointed out, and I can't say this enough: you need to have good products, good services, good infrastructure to, to put a bit good brand on, and um, you can't just cover up bad processes with a brand and say this is all new. Um, the brand is the uh, the output uh, uh, of a great company, and um, we're just proud that we're able to, to to do that. And as Jeff pointed out, it is a um, a result of great leadership, Mark Simon's uh, drive, commitment to building a strong and and, and great organization, uh, the team that has been with Halo for 20, 30 years. Um, has been so strong and they're still with us and they're still uh, providing uh, the value and keeping us level set. And then all the great new ideas of, uh, of people joining. It's just it's just been a great run. Uh, the, the brand um, launch is an amalgamation of all of that and a lot of great work. But I will say, and I'll toot his horn because he won't, you need a leader like Jeff Wurzel to keep everybody on task, on pace, providing honest input and uh, and looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, "Hey, here's who we are. Let's either get better here, and let's uh, or or let's take advantage of what we're very good at here, and and developing a brand around that. So that's really also a, a key linchpin to the success. All right. Um, you know, it's 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 interesting to see Halo has been in in growth mode for a long time. You guys are getting close to that 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 billion dollars threshold that everybody that everybody wants to see. I'll be very interested to see if you, you know when because I do think it's a matter of when that that, that, that you crack it so, so it's funny you mentioned that Chris we are, are often asked about that and our response is are we're not striving to be the biggest promotional products company out there today we're striving to be the best mm -hmm. and if being the best allows us and, and it attracts new customers and allows us to grow and we end up being the biggest, well, that again is just a result of being the best. So we are constantly striving at doing everything that we can to the best that we can do for our sales teams and our customers. The, 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 the sales will come as a result, but we are not, uh, we're not um, the biggest unless we're the best. And that's what we're trying to do first. Yeah. So. And that's probably a key reason why you're having the success that you guys are having. So, hey, you both have given me a bunch of your time today. Thank you so much. It's been really interesting to to hear about, you know, a, a process like this at, at a company like yours that has so much influence in our in our industry. I hope um, you guys enjoyed it. And Jim, Jeff, thank you so much for being with us. 
Thank you for having us. It was it was great fun to be with you. Thanks, Chris. It's great.